All right, well, here we are. We're still walking through Springfield. We were going the wrong way, apparently, but we found the studio tour right in the shadow of Hogwarts Castle. That's so weird. But, uh, all right. We are going to the studio tour. We're gonna check out all this awesome stuff. I'm so ready for this. Let's go. This is a view you will never see in Florida. We're on top of a mountain, basically. There's more mountains over there. Look down onto the studio back lot. There's the tour train. We'll be getting on that in a little bit. And of course, they show the different attractions and things that are on the studio tour and not. King Kong is on the studio tour. And of course, we have the studio tour hosted by Jimmy Fallon. He has a ride in Florida and he has kind of a ride in California as well. And now we get to go on a really exciting thing. The escalator down. <laughs> Woo! Hold on tight, guys. I don't know if we can handle this. Apparently there's an even longer escalator that we're gonna have to ride down, so that's gonna be really exciting. Huh? Yeah. Epic music as we come down the escalator. Even better. <laughs> Epic universal theme. All right, here we are. It's time for the studio tour. Let's go. All right, it's almost time for us to get on the tram. Let's go. I'm going to ruin movie magic for you. Ruin. Yes. But in the best possible way, you will leave my tour feeling and sounding like an industry professional. Does that work for everybody? Yes? Yeah. Glad to hear it. Now, as you enter the tram, make sure you move all, all the way to your right hand side. Fill in all those empty seats. Once the gates start to close, watch your hands, watch your toes. We want you to keep those with you. But once they do finally close, feel free to spread out. We're going to be hanging out with each other for about an hour. So get comfortable. Uh, this is a good time if you travel with any smaller people whose feet do not touch the bottom of the, oh, thank you, tram floor, to put them in the center of the seating arrangement. There's going to be some moving and shaking and bouncing. And we don't want anyone bouncing up and over the sides. We want you to stay nice and safe. Before we pull off, I also want to make sure everybody has a pair of 3D glasses. They look like this. Ooh, ah, fierce and fashionable. Does everybody have a pair? Yes? Yeah. Fabulous. If you do not, shame. No, I'm joking. If you do not, just put your hands in the air. Wave them around like you just don't care. Of course, you should care. You'll need them for King Kong 360 3D. And have a feeling things might get a little fast and furious later on during the tour. So again, if you do not have a pair, this is your last chance. Is that a hand in the air in part two, or are you just resting your arm in an awkward position? Oh, awkward position. All right, good. Looks like everybody has a pair of 3D glasses. Perfect. So in just a few moments, we will be leaving the theme park behind, heading into the heart of an actual working movie and television studio. There's production going on. They're filming shows like SEAL Team with David Boreanaz, Home and Family, and they're prepping for Halloween Horror Night. So you're going to get a sneak peek of what we have to offer you for that special event in just a few weeks. If I say so myself, and uh, Zoom. You're here with me. You're also here with our driver. His name is Graham. Everybody say, hey, Graham. Hey, Graham. Graham gave you a nice wave. Graham is very important, folks. Okay, we have just under 400 acres to cover. And I'm sitting backwards, so I can't do a thing about it. So we need this man, all right? One more person I'd like to introduce you to is my co-host. I recognize him from such shows as Saturday Night Live, as well as The Tonight Show with Mr. Jimmy Fallon. You made it. You made it. Welcome to the Universal Studio Tour. I'm Jimmy Fallon. I'll be making sure that you get through this experience in one piece. You've got the very best guy. Danny. And the greatest driver. Graham. 
They're the best. I love it. Even though Danny owes me five bucks. What? I know you guys are excited to get on the show, but first, a few safety rules. Every single time. All right, I do have a few rules I must go over before we get too far into this, and here they are. First, if you need any assistance during the tour, or have a medical emergency, or if you drop something of value off the side of the tram, or have any sound or video issues, reach up and grab the red cord that runs along the center of the ceiling of the tram, and I'll be back to assist you as soon as it's safe to do so. Looks like this. Otherwise, during the entire tour, please stay seated and keep your arms and legs inside the vehicle at all times. Remember to use the red cord above your head if you need any assistance. Please, no smoking of any kind during the tour. Be prepared. Our tour today features loud noises, sudden tram movements, fire effects, and many water effects. We're going to have your cameras out for great photo opportunities, but keep an eye on them so they don't get wet. Finally, for your safety and those around you, please do not use selfie sticks while on board the tram. All right, folks, up for the rules, time to have some fun. So we are currently traveling down our timeline. So when you decide the tram, we're going to see movie posters that represent just a handful of the over 10,000 movies we've made over the years. How many years? Great question, nobody. Our founder, Carl Lindley, opened up the doors right here March 15, 1915. So a lot of the classic movies you grew up watching, your parents grew up watching, even your grandparents grew up watching, were filmed in the front and back lot for taking you to right now. In fact, here's a clip from one of our classic black and white movies. Let's see if you recognize it. Does it look familiar? No? Thank you. filmed recently. Did you hear that? This is how about now, familiar? Still no, huh? Okay, how about him? Does he look familiar? Because I would literally just introduced you to him. It's Jimmy Fallon. Okay, guys, I lied. This is not a clip from a classic movie. This was shot fairly recently inside of Soundstage 20. Soundstage is the first industry secret I'm going to let you in on. First of all, I'd like to point out to you, it's coming up here on your left hand side, Soundstage 12. It's home to the hit NBC singing competition, The Voice. And since I have a little bit of pull here at Universal Studios, here's Carson Daly to tell you more. Hi everybody, I'm Carson Daly from NBC's The Voice. I want to welcome you to the Universal Front Lot. Our show is filmed on stage 12. It happens to be the largest sound stage on the Universal Lot. Take a look. That's right, it is the largest sound stage on our lot, third largest in the entire world. Here are a few other productions that have filmed inside of Sound Stage 12. So the majority of filming takes place inside of these sound stages. In order to accomplish that, that means sometimes we have to recreate the outdoors indoors. So on your screen, it looks like an awesome outdoor pool party was entirely created right there inside of Sound Stage 12. And this is what the interior of a sound stage looks like. So all of my fans of The Voice, this is what the area looks like once you take away all the set decorations, the audience seating, and the lighting. It's about 98% soundproof with walls four times thicker than the walls of a normal building. And most sound stages are both completely empty. That's why filmmakers can create anything their imagination has come up with. Over here on your left hand side, you're going to see sound stages 20, 18, and 17. They've been used for many different productions like Colony, Desperate Housewives, and the list goes on because we have many different television shows that film here. Take a look. Fall act. If your face stays where it is, it's going to get punched. 
Superstore films the side of Sound Stages 17 and 18, also 21, which is over here on your left hand side. That's also rebuilt the Mission Control Room for Apollo 13 because NASA's Mission Control Room is way too small to put all of our equipment and crew members. It's also where Steven Spielberg tested out his shark for the movie Jaws. We'll talk about that more a little later. So as you can see, we got a lot going on here. We're constantly busy, but you know what? We can handle it. That's because Universal Studios is a part of NBC Universal, one of the largest entertainment companies in the entire world. Yes, we have your favorite shows, but also your favorite networks, such as NBC, Sci-Fi, USA, Bravo, Telemundo, NBC Universal, Golf, CNBC, MSNBC, The Weather Channel, Oxygen, Esquire, and NBC Sports, just to name a few. Now on your right hand side, we have Sound Stages 41 and 44. I like to call this area Sitcom Rough. Some of the favorite sitcoms were filmed here like The Jeffersons, Silver Spoons, Sabrina the Teenage Witch, Coach starring Craig T. Nelson, Parenthood starring Craig T. Nelson, Martin starring Martin Lawrence. The newer productions are constantly filming here. Marlon Wayans has a new show they filmed here called Marlon. Also, The Good Place filmed here at TRZ inside of Sound Stage 44. And a new show, Reverie, has been filming inside of Sound Stage 44 as well. Hey! Looks like you have your first celebrity sighting over here on your left hand side, everybody. It's Ted! Hey! Sipping on a martini. Five o'clock somewhere, don't touch. Ted's in front of Bluegrass Films. That's the production company that brought us Ted and Ted 2. So all of these photos here on your left hand side, these are all offices of some of the top writers, directors, and production companies in the biz. But before these were offices, these were dressing rooms to huge stars like Lucille Ball, Elizabeth Taylor, Rock Hudson, Jimmy Stewart. This is during the golden age of Hollywood, the 30s, 40s, and 50s, and actors were contracted to work with one studio at a time. That contract lasts up to seven years. So you wanted them to feel comfortable like they had a home away from home. And that's exactly what these bungalows did. Now, they still see some pretty big names. For instance, Illumination Entertainment. They brought you all those minion movies, The Secret Lives of Pets, The Sing. They have their offices over here. Mark Platt, the man who brought Wicked to stage and screen, he has an office over here. Robert Zemeckis, the director, has an office. And right now we're passing by Bungalow 5195, currently home to the Daniel Richards Company. But before then, it was Alfred Hitchcock's office. Inside, you're seeing two brand new high tech sound stages. The first one is being used for the reboot of Will and Grace. So excited. This fall, Will and Grace is coming back to NBC for its ninth season on September 28th. Deborah Messick, Eric McCormick, Megan Mullally, and Sean Hayes will all be back. This show's been off the air for 11 years, but amazingly, the actors have only gotten five years older. That's the magic of Hollywood, folks. Now, the first production to ever film inside of these sound stages was Hairspray Live. What was really great about that setup is they were able to film the interior scenes inside those sound stages. Then when they needed to dance around the city streets of Baltimore, they crossed the border from the front lot to the back lot, just like we're doing right now. The back lot is where we have all of our large exterior sets, show all of our outdoor scenes here on a large scale. These particular sets are metropolitan sets. They've been turned to every major city you can think of. And I'll tell you about it, but first I have a question. How many bricks do you think it took to make that building over there on your left? Any guesses? Throw it out there. Zero. You are correct. Zero bricks were used to make that building. Because it's not technically a building. So we call it the side. We built front sides and tops of houses. That's it. We only build what the camera can see, and then we rely on your imagination to build in the rest. So if we're not going to build entire buildings, we're not going to use expensive materials like brick and stone. It's just plastic, plaster, and fiberglass moldings that we press out in our film with a bustable building that's attached to the side of wooden frames. Now as we're turning the corner, you can see a few of the mazes that have been created for Halloween Horror Nights. So here's a little information. We're going to American Horror Story, Roanoke. And let's see if you can guess what's happening over here. I'm not going to tell you. Yes. Come back in a few weeks and you'll find out for yourself. As we turned the corner, we entered into London Square. So this area was created to resemble a modern day of it. It's created with a so-called country building, non-denominational bill of church, and it's been used in shows like Agents of Shield as well as Agent Carter. To me, the most interesting thing is this wall over here on your left hand side. This 
doesn't look very realistic to you, but if you pull out your phone and take a picture, it'll look, it'll look a lot more realistic on your phone. That's because the camera only has one eye, but you have two, so you're a lot easier to pull. It was created using a technique called Chihuahua, which is French for pull the eye. So it's painted with a lot of highlights and a lot of low lights, so it looks a lot more realistic. And I don't know if you noticed, but some of those doors were painted on, but some actually opened. So we're filming a scene out here. We can hire a few background actors to walk in and out of those doors. And all of a sudden, it looks like people actually live in those apartment buildings. Well, let's say this imaginary scene is taking place during rush hour. That means we need traffic, right? We'll hire a few more background actors, pay them a little extra money to use their car, and they'll drive around that mural all day, one big loop. And all of a sudden, we have traffic. As we turn the corner, take a look one last time on your right hand side, and then your left, you'll get another glimpse of a New York street. It's been seen in the American Ditch Warrior, Fate of the Furious, the Fendi Project, Transformers, Captain America, the first adventure, the amazing Spider-Man, CIS, CSI, Austin Powers, the Shy Shack, Stick, the Blues Brothers, the list goes on. We've already moved on to the urban jungle. We're headed to another jungle. This one we call Skull Island. Creatures from you know prehistoric times. So I was thrilled when Universal invited me back to Skull Island, and it's great to have you along for the ride. Now we have created this 3D immersive experience, so you're going to have to have your glasses ready. Don't put them on yet. Just put them in your hand because we're about to return to Skull Island. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain seated at all times. Hold on to your belongings.
right, glad to hear it. Hold on to those 3D glasses, everybody. Have a feeling you might need them later on in the tour. Now that epic battle was portrayed on the world's second largest digital 3D screens. They stand at 40 feet tall, 180 feet long, the equivalent of 16 movie theater screens. And they use some of the world's most advanced filmmaking technology today. That was brought to you by Peter Jackson, but also the filmmakers at Weta Digital. Now they've won seven Academy Awards for their work in film. The most recent being for the live action version of The Jungle Book. They started off with television shows like Hercules and Xena Warrior Princess. Then they moved to the big screen with movies like Avatar. They've been working on Avatar 2. Avatar 3 and 4 have been greenlit. Let me still come to a theater near you and I'll cut the ears. They work on the Lord of the Rings trilogy, Batman vs. Superman, even Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Speaking of apes, Studios for the audience is in the middle of the environment. They're looking at all directions. There's creatures coming at them. They're seeing Kong from this side and T-Rexes from the other side. And looking on a movie, we always know people are looking. They're looking straight ahead. They're looking at the shot that we're working on. Here you have to take into account that people are looking in all directions. Also, one of the things about this wide angle movie that I used to work on is my cuts because it's one giant shot and this tram that's driving along through Skull Island is where the camera's from. This ring represents the where the screen is 10 meters away. We're really creating about 50 minutes of a feature film. That amount of visual information, that number of pixels, and presenting them to the audience is a hell of a ride. Now a lot of times what filmmakers will do is they'll combine special effects like you just experienced with a picture car. A picture car is any vehicle that you see on screen, whether it's television or film. And that's what we're going to take you to see right now, some of our favorite picture cars. So pull out your cameras, pull out your phones, we have some cool cars on your left hand side. On your left hand side, you're going to see a picture car from Jurassic World. The gyrosphere has been pulled for production. That's because it's over in Hawaii where they're filming Jurassic World 2. And guess who they're bringing back, folks? Jump on the bloom! Get Yay! excited! Now, the Woo! first Jurassic World movie had a very special cameo. Did you guys see it? No? That's okay. That's why I'm here. I've got you covered. Take a look. That's right, folks. It's Mr. Jimmy Buffett. Running away from dinosaurs, not spilling a drop. And you can be just like Mr. Jimmy Buffett because Universal City Walk now has its own Margaritaville, which you can experience later on tonight. But we are moving on from Fast and Furious Cars. We're going to head on to see some ferocious animals, ladies and gentlemen. To Jurassic Park. On either side of you are props and picture cars. They're using Jurassic Park and the Lost World Jurassic Park. They're rented by Steven Spielberg. Not only that, we even have a few of the dinosaurs. Okay, they're still seeing those cages. You know, let me play their theme music. That usually helps. Let's see. I don't know, is it working? By the way, if you have a little schmutz on your face, you might want to wipe that off. Now, when the dinosaurs actually appeared in the movies, if you remember, it was always raining, it was always gloomy. That was on purpose. Weather can really help to set the mood. But it's sunny Southern California. It's always gorgeous. We live a very rough life here. So that means we have to work a little harder. Mr. Roker. Hi, everybody. Here's today's forecast for the Universal Backlot. It's going to be sunny and dry in Six Points, Texas cool and cloudy in Little Europe. Expect snow and sleet on New York Street, and we've got a high chance of fog and precipitation for Skull Island, Amity Island, and Island New York. Thank you, Mr. Roker, for setting up our weather demonstration. Okay, everybody, we are here in Old Mexico, seeing the critical lines beyond Oregon's and HBO's shapes. And we're creating a little Hollywood storm for you. So we've got the lightning going, we've got the thunder, like most storms. And then, at the perfect moment, we make it rain. Boom. 
this is how we make it rain in the boobies, ladies and gentlemen. It's a highly sophisticated and intricate system called a sprinkler. That's it. You just shoot the water straight up, allowed to fall down to the ground naturally. You might notice the rain is only falling in specific places. We only need it to fall where the actor would be standing, where the camera would be facing. The rest of it, we don't care. And if you're really observing, you'll notice the raindrops are larger than used to seeing in nature. You take a picture of real rain, you barely see it. Think of those football or baseball games that happen in the rain, right? It does not work for us. We need you to know what you're looking at. So you make the raindrops extra large so they'll appear better on, oh, that is a lot. Can we maybe cut off that water? Ooh. Like... Whoa. What happened, Carlin? You guys thought you were safe? No. Folks, if you're sitting in a blue seat, you might get wet on this tour. That's right, they're all blue. Yeah, every single one of them. That was our flood. Thousands of gallons of water held in tanks to the top of the hill. All we do is open up the floodgates, the water runs down, it splashes up in your face, goes right back up again. The same flood was featured in the movie, Big Fat Liar, starring Paul Giamatti, Amanda Bynes, and Frankie Muniz. this scene. That is Paul Giamatti, right here. That's Paul Giamatti's stunt double. Now you know who really did get hit by our flood? Lady Gaga in her music video for Judas. So she, during practice, she was watching her stunt double practice to take that fall. When she looked at her stunt double, she said, I can do this, I'm Lady Gaga. So he she grabbed her six inch heels, Stood in front of that flood and got hit in the face over and over again just for your viewing pleasure. Just like that, we've already crossed the border from old Mexico into the wild, wild west. Welcome to Six Points, Texas, y'all. Right now, we're sort of on the outside between what we used to call Denver Street on your right hand side and Six Points, Texas on your left. Now, this area used to all be connected because Six Points, Texas got its name because it used to consist of six different streets. And each street would have its own saloon, it would have its own bar, and have its own sheriff's office. So each street could be its own town. In fact, we used to shoot six different movies at the same exact time. What? How is that possible? Silent film era. One production would never impede on another. In fact, in the first couple of years of our studio's history, we were able to turn out over 200 silent Western films because of that fact. And our founder, Carl Lumley, he built bleachers in this area. You could come in for a nickel, sit down, and watch your favorite Western being made. You get to root for the good guys, root the bad guys. You got an inside view on how the film process happens. And the actors, which mostly came from Baldville, got to feed off of the energy of the crowd. Then when you left, you were given a chicken sandwich on your way home. That's because this area used to be a chicken ranch, and Carl Lumley kept it around just in case that movie business didn't really work out for him. Luckily for us, it did. Now we're turning into the interior part of Six Points, Texas. This area you might recognize from a lot of the productions. A lot of classic questions were filmed here, and a lot of classic cowboys worked here, like John Wayne, Virginia and Destry rides again. Even a 
Western aren't as popular as they used to be. The Tanger still sees a good amount of filming because it's great for shooting period pieces. Saving Mr. Banks turned six foot sexist to the turn of the century Australia. Episodes were five and six of the HBO series Westworld film here. Scenes from the color purple film here, the movie Serenity, and the list goes on. We're back in Mexico. Hello, if you've noticed, you might recognize this area from Three Amigos. Starring Steve Martin, Martin Short, and Chevy Chase, Janet Jackson, Phil Harbour, music video for Escapade here, Enrique Iglesias, Phil Harbour's music video for Palamos here, and you've seen it in Pop, as well as Nacho Libre. So the list goes on. We use these same sets over and over again, and depending on how you dress them, they can be completely different time periods and completely different places. But you know, personally, I'm not much of a desert person. I like the water. Do you like me? Good. And that means we're going to head on over to the beach. Now, our beach run we call Amity Island. It's nice and peaceful, great fishing, you know, a great place just to relax and unwind after a hard day of giving tours and lifting the veil of secrecy. Now, full disclosure, we did have a shark issue, but as you can see, I caught them, I strung them up, and I left them up there as a reminder of those shark friends not to mess with us. Okay, you want to go biting people? You take that somewhere else like Disneyland. Don't bring that to your Universal Studios Hollywood. The entertainment kit. What is everybody? Like, oh, you've got to be kidding me. Wait a minute, is that George? Hey, hey, George? George! George, there's another shark swim away! George! Hey, George! Are we still on for dinner tonight? I was wondering what I should wear. Maybe so. Oh, oh you seem busy. Okay, uh, George, we'll be scheduling. Everyone, please stay seated. We're going to move forward. I'm sure George is all right. I hope. Um, now, how about we park behind these tanks of flammable gasoline? I just have a good feeling about them. Yeah, perfect. What's happening? Oh! You know what? It's okay. It's all right. I saw those sharks. Sharks? Okay, fire. Okay? Just ignore all the screaming. One more time for the folks in the back. There he is. That was a good scream up here. Everybody, I'd like to introduce you to our shark, Bruce. He was named after Steven Spielberg's shark, Bruce, who he named after his attorney, Bruce. Huh. And it was taken one step further. If you're a fan of the movie Finding Nemo, you might remember that the shark was named Bruce. Is your friends not food? That was to pay tribute to the Jaws. Now, our shark works wonderfully. Steven Spielberg loves so much. I told you he tested it outside of Soundstage 21. There's a pit built to the floor of that soundstage. So they filled it up with fresh water, they put the shark inside. Everything was marvelous. But on the first day of filming, they took it out to the middle of the Atlantic Ocean to the bottom. That's because the ocean is it made out of fresh water. It's made out of salt water. You gotta factor that in if you're going to build a mechanical shark. Wherever you were on the island, you could hear the rain. They were always saying, the shark is not working. Repeat, the shark is not working. We just waited around. We just waited and waited and waited. The shark was there were so many problems with that shark they had to push back the movie's release date over 100 days. Jaws, guys, was supposed to be a Christmas movie. It was originally supposed to be released the winter of 74. Ended up being released the summer of 75. And Steven Spielberg thought that was the end of his career. It was down in the mouth of a shark. But it actually made it. So many people had heard about the issues on set that when the movie was finally released, the line went around the block, making Jaws the very first summer blockbuster ever. And to this day, people release their movies during the summertime, hoping to get the same result. And let's be honest, a movie about man eating shark, much scarier than a beach season, right? Oh, yeah. And we would call Mr. Shark a bit of a diva, you know, always causing problems on set. But he has some competition on the block because we're about to enter a street known for housing visas. Well, to be fair, maybe they're just desperate housewives. Everyone, welcome to Colonial Street, or as you might recognize it, Wisteria Lane. 
Housewives. So now that we're here, let's show you around the neighborhood. Starting on your left hand side, the Beige House is the home of Gabrielle Solis, played by Eva Longoria. The Lilac House is the home of Bob and Lee during the final seasons, but before then it was 1313 Rocky Bird Lane, the home of the Monsters. The Yellow and Stone House is the home of Susan Delfino, played by Terry Asher. Back in the 70s, the Hardy Boys lived there. On your right hand side, the Blue and Brick House is the home of Ruby McKinn, played by Marsha Cross. Back again, left is the home of Lynette played by Emmy Award winning Felicity Huff. That was still season one, that's where all of the houses ended. In between seasons one and two, they realized they had a huge shit on their hands. They wanted out of our housewives. They had to add for houses. So that's when they built the one that's behind me in front of you. The home of Military Edie Britt, played by Nicolette Sheraton, and then Renee Perry, who's played by Vanessa Williams. As you can see, we're making a big old UE, so if you didn't get the pictures you wanted to on our way in, that's okay. We've got you covered. We have an opportunity to go on our way out. Now, most of these houses are just shelves, folks. Front sides and tops, that's it. You open up the door, you go straight through to the backyard. The only one that you can film inside of is the latest house, which is Edie Bridge in the Leisure House. In fact, as we pass by Lynette Scavo's home, now on your right hand side, you're going to see a big tree. Sort of looks like it's in the backyard, but it's actually right where the living room should be. Apparently, that tree is so old, Ellie County will let us chop it down, so we just built the house around it. So, whenever the ladies were inside of their homes, they're actually inside of sets. They were built the sound stages I played out to you in the beginning of the tour. Then when they need the ladies to walk around the neighborhood, they put them in golf carts, drive them up here, place them behind those doors, yell action, and just continue on with the scene. Later on, you edit it all together, it looks like everything happened in one location. So now we showed you around the neighborhood, check out what Mysteria Lane looks like on television. If there is one thing everyone in suburbia can appreciate, it's a good neighborhood. drive up, you're going to notice that Mother's house is a little smaller than you originally thought it would be. That's because they wanted it to look really far up on that hill, so they used forced perspective. The further away something is, the smaller it seems, so they actually built it three-fourths the size of a normal building. <laughs> Folks, I know that was a little intense. We're jumping out of the 
Norman. Norman, stop it. Stop it, Norman. You're being rude. I'm so sorry. I've had other issues for several decades now. Just ignore him. You know what? We're going to make it up to you. Because Graham is going to stop this tram and it runs in just a moment. So you can stand up and take a few pictures of one of the largest sets ever created in Hollywood history. The crash site from Steven Spielberg's War of the Worlds. Okay, you can stand. The airplane crash site set is a perfect example of a set that is all designed around a vision that Steven had. We first began to sit down to talk about the war of the world. I thought, what if the 747 goes down right in a big neighborhood? Because it's, it's just something you don't see. You're doing good. You're doing good. Keep your eyes on me. That's what you have. Listen, I want you to close your eyes, okay? Okay. Down closed. Okay. Robbie, get in. All right, we're going to start moving. So everyone, please take your seats. Thank get you. In. directed by Steven Spielberg. That's a real 747 Boeing airplane that was bought and destroyed just for this set. Cost them $60,000 to buy it, but $200,000 just to ship it. That's because it was way too large to bring in one piece, so they had to rip the roof off of it, chop it up into four separate pieces, put each piece on a flatbed truck, and then drive it here to the set. It took them about three months to build this set, filmed on it for three days, and it's in four minutes of the movie. Steven Spielberg wanted realism. Oh, hey, what's up? Look, this might be more serious than I thought. What just happened? I don't know. This is a secure lock. No, it's not. Who are you? What? I'll tell you who I am, boy. I'm the reason bad guys use a nightlight. I'm the reason the boogeyman begs his mama to look under his bed. And I'm the reason you just lost control of this whole operation. My name is Special Agent Luke Hobbs of the U.S. Diplomatic Security Service. And as of 16.9 seconds ago, I'm the man in charge. The hell you are. Let me clue you in on two things, sweet cheeks. One, there's a high value witness from the Federal Protection Program aboard your vehicle. And two, an international crime syndicate led by Owen Shaw is honing in on this vehicle to take that witness out. Shaw's as ruthless as they come, and he'll stop at nothing to eliminate his target. Every living soul on this vehicle is in serious danger. Other than that, enjoy the ride. This is not your jurisdiction. It is now, stink pickle. I'm so tired of you stink guys stepping in just whenever you, you feel like Mute him. Uh, okay. Don't you? That's better. We're moving your vehicle to a safe location until we have the situation under control. Until then, I want everybody to stay calm. Enjoy the ride. I'm taking care of business. Palms out. All right. Well, apparently somebody on this tram saw some things they shouldn't have. Now we're all in a bunch of trouble. I'm blaming you, Graham. Every time he goes to Vegas, something goes down. It's getting ridiculous at this point, sir. All right. Well, apparently this Hobbs guy wants us to head in here at Sullivan's truck repair. It's, it's a known street racer hideout. So I'm all over booze. I'm going to take myself off camera. I feel like it need to be a little bit more incognito. tracking us here. So put away your cameras and turn off your cell phones. One flash or one ringtone can give us away. I need y'all to take this real serious. Oh, we do. Okay, pull into the next bay and we'll meet you in there. All right, folks, couple of things. Number one, I need you to stay seated at all times. I, I don't want you to find out the side. Two, I think our best member of survival is to blend it in.
State Avenue party, and the, where, where the other girl? Roman Pierce. Roman Pierce, FBI, on the ground. Me on? On the ground, do it now. You know how long I took the to iron your shirt, man? I'm, I'm up. On the ground, right now. Baby, let's, let's back up a little bit. Got it. It's lightweight. First of all, I don't work for you. Oh, really? Well, tell me, Roman, who do you work for? We don't work for nobody. Just to clear out of here, otherwise we can't get into your safety. Guarantee my safety? I'm the one holding the gun. Yeah, but mine's a whole lot bigger than yours. Um, let's quit this guy on this out. Let's go, Cookie Puss! That ugly suit on, man. It's cheap. Somebody out there really pissed off shop. It's gonna get ugly fast. Yeah, don't worry. Lucky for you, our whole family protects you. Are you kidding me, Roman? You didn't shut off your phone, bro? I gotta call you back. I'm just I'm in another spot. See what I'm talking about? Call you back. Man, it's on vibrate. Sean Trace does. I just can't hold the phone. Buddy, Roman, we're up. <sighs> Trying to move that vehicle. It's about to get real interesting. The Mona Lisa's all warmed up right next door. digital 3D screen in the entire world. So we have number one and number two right here at Universal Studios. Why? Because we're awesome. 
And with that, it's time to wrap up the tour. Did you guys have a good time? Yeah. So glad to hear it. Let's roll that closing montage. On behalf of myself, Graham, and everybody here at NBC Universal, I'd like to thank you so much for taking this tour with us. We hope you enjoy your exclusive behind the scenes look at some of Hollywood's hottest filming locations. Here's an inside tip for all of you. To get the most out of today's visit with us, download the official Universal Studios Hollywood app to check out wait times, show times, and get up to the minute park information. For example, check out show times for Waterworld, a live Seaworth Spectacular, or confirm from the park close today at 7 p.m. Once we let you off the tram, I'll be standing right outside. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you just want to give me a high five, I take those too. But above all else, folks, have a happy day. All right, so we just got off the Universal Studio Tour. Guys, was that everything we dreamed of? Everything and more. Yeah. It's pretty fantastic. I, I really enjoyed it. I thought, you know, something I thought was really cool was uh, when we was passing by the set there for, for Well and Grace, like you could see like the parking spots for the stars of the show. I mean, it was empty, but like... Still pretty awesome. Was, yeah, it was pretty awesome. Totally amazing. Yep. Yeah. Well, we both had a really good time. Is excellent. Now we're going to go explore the rest of the park. There's a lot to see still. We're definitely going to go see Waterworld, yep. do some rides, probably do the special effects tour, and of course lunch at Harry Potter. Oh, the Great Feast. The Great Feast. Oh, yeah, we are doing that. We are still doing that. Yes, we are. I hope there's plenty. There probably is. Let's be real. All right, let's go explore the rest of Universal Studios Hollywood.